Aquarius Swarmers, welcome back for the latest buzz from the hive. Have you ever heard of the expression, the lungs of the earth? Have you ever wondered, does our earth really have lungs? Where does our oxygen come from? The air we breathe is comprised of nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, water vapors, and some other gases in smaller quantities. Every single cell in an animal, and this includes us humans, requires oxygen to perform cellular respiration. Cellular respiration is the process by which animals take in oxygen and release carbon dioxide and water as waste products. Cells use that oxygen to burn food for energy. This is how animal life on our planet evolved to grow, reproduce, and, well, basically be alive. Plants also require oxygen. While during the day, plants produce oxygen through photosynthesis by taking in carbon dioxide and sunlight, at night, most plants respire, meaning they take oxygen in and release carbon dioxide. Animals respire in order to release energy from glucose and make it available in the form of ATP for chemical, osmotic, and other biological processes. Plants do too. In fact, plants need to respire virtually all the time in order to supply their energy needs. Overall, plants release more oxygen than they take in, and their roles as carbon sequesters are invaluable. Roughly one third of our oxygen comes from rainforests. But lungs of the earth? Hmm, not quite. If anything could be referred to as the lungs of the earth, it's our oceans. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, scientists estimate that 50 to 80% of the oxygen production on Earth comes from the ocean. This makes a whole lot of sense when you consider that oceans cover almost three-fourths of the Earth's surface. The majority of this oxygen production is from oceanic plankton, drifting plants, algae, and some bacteria that can photosynthesize. One type of phytoplankton, Prochlorococcus, releases countless tons of oxygen into the atmosphere. It is so small that millions can fit in a single drop of water. Prochlorococcus has achieved fame as perhaps the most abundant photosynthetic organism on the planet. Dr. Sylvia A. Earle, a National Geographic explorer, has estimated that Prochlorococcus provides the oxygen for one in every five breaths we take. Phytoplankton also form the basis of the ocean food web, sustaining all major marine life forms. And when they die, a percentage sink to the ocean floor, sequestering as much carbon as all terrestrial plants. But why do the estimated percentages of oxygen production occurring in the ocean vary so much? Well, it's tough to calculate because the amount is constantly changing. Scientists can use satellite imagery to track photosynthesizing plankton and estimate the amount of photosynthesis occurring in the ocean. But the amount of plankton changes seasonally and can be influenced by temperature, available nutrients, and other factors. Everything on our planet exists through a delicate balance of very many moving parts, which is why it's important for us humans to do everything we can to maintain that balance. When our anthropogenic activities throw things out of whack, like the very climate of the planet, it's time for us to change. Thank you, as always, for joining us, Swarmers. We hope this has been a breath of fresh air from the hive. Give us a like if you can, a share, and don't forget to subscribe to The Swarm so that we can see you next time.